so far, we've only been considering natural number exponents. For example, 5 to the fourth power. Here, 5 is the base, and 4 is the power or the exponent. Now, 5 to the fourth power means 5 written as a factor four times. Okay? 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, which is 625. Okay, now it will be useful for us to expand our idea of exponents to include zero and negative exponents. But the question is, how should we define these exponents? What will we mean by something like 5 to the 0 power? It doesn't make any sense to say we're going to write 5 down as a factor 0 times. Okay, so we just can't rely on our intuition in this case. Since we can't rely on our intuition, what we would like is that the rules that we've developed for natural number exponents should hold true for zero and negative exponents as well. Because however we're going to define 5 to the 0, okay, it should be consistent with the rules that we already have for natural number exponents. Okay, we don't want a different set of rules for every type of exponent. Okay, let's recall the first rule of exponents for natural numbers that we've already had. That is a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. For example, x squared times x cubed is x to the 2 plus 3, or x to the fifth power. OK? This was the first rule for exponents. If you are unsure about these rules, uh, we have an earlier videotape on exponents. OK? And it would be a good idea to see that one first. OK, now, whatever, we're going to, whatever meaning we're going to give to 5 to the 0 should be consistent with this rule that we already have for exponents. OK, let's look at this. 5 to the 0 times 5 to the 3 should be 5 to the 0 plus 3 if the rule a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n is going to hold true for zero exponents as well. OK? 5 to the 0 times 5 to the 3 should be 5 to the 0 plus 3. Or 5 to the 0 times 5 to the 3 should be equal to 5 to the 3. Can we have okay, an equation here? We can divide both sides by 5 to the 3. 5 to the third power, and we get that 5 to the 0 should logically be defined to be equal to 5 to the third power of 5 to the third power, which of course would be equal to 1. 5 to the third power we know is 125. It's 5 times 5 times 5 divided by 5 times 5 times 5. The answer would just be equal to 1. Okay, so for the first rule of exponents to make sense, okay, for zero exponents, it appears here that 5 to the 0 equals 1. And there was nothing sacred about the number 5 here. OK, if we had a to the 0 times a to the n, this must be a to the 0 plus n, or a to the n, if the first rule of exponents is going to hold true. Dividing both sides by a to the n, we get that a to the 0 should logically be defined to be equal to 1. OK, by the way, this is only true if a is not 0. 0 to the 0 power is going to be meaningless. OK? As long as a is not 0, a to the 0 power is equal to 1. 0 to the 0 power doesn't make any sense. For example, 32 to the 0 power is equal to 1. x squared plus 5 to the 0 power equals 1. 7 to the 0 power equals 1. Okay, Any non-zero number or quantity raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. OK, well, that takes care of zero exponents. Now the question is, what about negative exponents? Once again, we want our rules for natural number, of expo natural number exponents to hold true again, Okay, starting with 
a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. We're going to try to give some meaning to uh, something like 5 to the minus 4 power. Okay, what should we define 5 to the minus 4 power to be? Okay, well, it stands to reason that 5 to the minus 4 power times 5 to the 4 power should be 5 to the minus 4 plus 4 power, 5 to the 0 power, or 1. If we say five, we have 5 to the minus 4 power, if we multiply by 5 to the 4 power, and if the first rule of exponents is going to hold true for negative number exponents, okay, then 5 to the minus 4 times 5 to the 4 must be 5 to the minus 4 plus 4, or 5 to the 0 power, which we already have decided is going to be defined to be 1. Okay, so 5 to the minus 4 power times 5 to the 4 power is equal to 1. Dividing both sides here, okay, we have 5 to the minus 4 times 5 to the 4 equals 1. Dividing both sides by 5 to the 4, we get that 5 to the minus 4 power is 1 over 5 to the 4 power. And when you have a negative number exponent like this, okay, you can take the reciprocal, okay, the same base to the positive power. 5 to the minus 4 is 1 over 5 to the 4th power. And once again, there is nothing special about the number 5. If we had done this in general for a to the minus n and multiplied it by a to the n, we would get a to the 0 a to the minus n times a to the n is a to the minus n plus n, or a to the 0, which of course is 1. So that a to the minus n times a to the n is 1, dividing both sides by a to the n. We get that a to the minus n is 1 over a to the n. Of course, a is not 0 here. But it should be pointed out that these are definitions. Okay? Zero and negative exponents had no meaning before this videotape for us. We are defining a to the 0 to be 1, a to the minus n to be 1 over a to the n. By doing this, the rules that we have for natural number exponents will, all, will also hold true for uh, zero and negative exponents as well. Okay, now, when we had the expression, and when we had this uh, equation here, a to the minus n times a to the n equals 1, we divided both sides by a to the n and got a to the minus n is 1 over a to the n. Okay, dividing both sides by a to the n a to the minus n is 1 over a to the n. We could have also divided both sides by a to the minus n to get that a to the n is 1 over a to the minus n. Okay, you can use, these are reciprocals, a to the minus n and a to the n. They multiply to 1. Okay, so a to the minus n is 1 over a to the n, and a to the n is 1 over a to the minus n. And you can use either of these expressions, whichever is more convenient for you. Uh, if we're trying to simplify an algebraic expression, we will consider our goal that the final answer to be that our final answer has no negative exponents in it. So sometimes it'll be more convenient to use this, and sometimes it'll be more convenient to use this. For example, if we have 4 to the minus 2 power in an expression, we can, according to this, rewrite this as 1 over 4 to the second power, which is 1 over 4 times 4, or 1 over 16. On the other hand, if we have 1 over 5 to the minus 2 power in an expression, okay, then it, we can make use of the fact that 1 over 5 to the minus 2 power is the same as 5 to the second power, or 25. So the rules can be used in either way. Okay, it might be convenient to think of it in this way. If you have a negative exponent, 
okay, in the numerator, it can be moved into the denominator with a positive exponent. On the other hand, if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, it can be moved up to the numerator with a positive exponent. Remember, 5 to the 2 over 1 is, 5 to the 2 is really 5 to the 2 over 1. Okay, let's say we're working with a to the third power over a to the minus 5. Okay, now if we want to simplify this, and remember simplifying means that our final answer should have no negative exponents. We could say that, well, a to the minus 5 is 1 over a to the 5. That's using our definition. And of course, when you're dividing by a fraction like this, a to the third divided by this fraction, you can instead invert and multiply a to the third times a to the 5 over 1. Instead of a to the third divided by this fraction, it's a to the third times the reciprocal. OK, you invert and multiply. Now, a to the third times a to the 5, of course, by the first rule of exponents, is a to the eighth power. OK, now this is a roundabout way of doing this. It's a more direct way of doing this. You'll remember that we had a rule for exponents that said a to the m power over a to the n power is a to the m minus n power. Now, when we first had this, we said that m and n had to be natural numbers and m had to be greater than n. We didn't want to run to any zero or negative exponents at that time. But now we've defined zero and negative exponents so that the rules that, we've already, that we already have for natural number exponents are going to be true for zero and negative exponents as well. Therefore, we can make use of this rule okay, to work out a problem like a to the third over a to the minus 5. Okay, a to the third over a to the minus 5, you can say this is a to the 3 minus a minus 5, and immediately get the answer a to the eighth power. 3 take away minus 5 is the same as 3 plus 5 or 8. Okay, so instead of going through this whole procedure where you say a to the minus 5, is 1 over a to the fifth, and then you divide, you invert and multiply, and so on. You can just make use of the second rule for exponents. It is now applicable for uh, negative numbers as well as positive numbers here. We have a to the 3 over a to the minus 5. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. 3 take away a minus 5 gives you a to the eighth. And this is a more direct way of handling the problem. OK, let's try another example x to the minus 2 times y to the 4 over x to the minus 4 times y to the 6th power. If we want to simplify this expression, OK, no negative exponents in the final answer. The first thing we're going to do is to think of this as, say, this fraction times this one. And we're going to use that second roll of exponents, one that we have over here, a to the m over a to the n. When you're dividing, same base, you subtract the powers. You subtract the exponents. We're going to make use of that twice over here. x to the minus 2 over x to the minus 4 is x to the minus 2 take away a minus 4. y to the 4 over y to the 6 is y to the 4 minus 6. Okay, we're dividing, we're going to subtract the powers. Minus 2 take away a minus 4. Here, 4 minus 6. Now, minus 2 take away a minus 4 is minus 2 plus 4, okay, which just gives us 2. Minus 2 plus 4 gives us plus 2. And here, 4 minus 6 gives us minus 2. It looks better than the one we started with, but it's still not finished because we still have a negative exponent. So we will say that y to the minus 2 is 1 over y squared. This is by the definition of negative exponents. y to the minus 2 power is 1 over y to the second power, giving us a final answer of x squared over y squared. Okay, there were other rules for exponents that we had for when we studied natural number exponents. I want to recall two of these right now. One of them said that 
and you have a product AB to a power, you can take each factor to that power and multiply them. AB to the nth power was A to the n, B to the n. Okay, this was not true for a sum. It had to be a product. It was also, we also had a rule for quotients. A over B to the n was A to the n over B to the n. Okay, but it is not true for a sum or a difference. Okay, and another rule that we had is when you have a to the nth power raised to the nth power, it's a to the m n power. Okay, a power to a power, you multiply the powers. Okay, don't confuse this with a to the m times a to the n. Here you add the powers. Same base, multiply, okay? You keep the base and you add the powers. Here you only have a to the m and the whole thing is raised to the nth power. In that case, you multiply the powers. Now these rules are true for zero and negative exponents as well. And I want to uh, use them in this problem. We want to simplify x to the third power, y to the minus second power, quantity to the minus second power. Okay, first I see this as an a, b to the n power type problem. Okay, it's a product, a, b raised to the nth power. So I'll write it as a, which is x cubed, to the nth power times b to the nth power. Okay, we're just using this first rule up here. a, b to the n is a to the n, b to the n. Here we have a, b to the n. It's a to the n, b to the n. Now I'm going to make use of the second rule over here. a to the m to the n power, you multiply the powers, you have a to the m n. And that's what we have here, a to the m to the n. So we're going to have x to the 3 times minus 2, or x to the minus 6 power, y to the minus 2 times minus 2, or y to the plus 4 power. Okay, now we're almost finished. We just have to realize that x to the minus 6 is 1 over x to the 6th power. And this gives us a final answer. Remember, y to the 4th is really y to the 4th over 1. This gives us a final answer of y to the 4th over x to the 6th. Okay, let's simplify this arithmetic expression. 3 to the minus 2 plus 5 to the minus 1 power. 3 to the minus 2 power is 1 over 3 squared by definition, and 5 to the minus 1 power is 1 over 5 to the first power. Of course, we don't usually put in the first power, because that would just mean 5 to the first power is just 5. Okay, so we have here 1 over 3 squared, 1 over 9 plus 1 over 5, and to simplify, we would like to add these fractions. Of course, to add fractions, we have to combine over the lowest common denominator, which in this case is the product of the denominators, 45. We change 1 ninth into some number of 40 fifths, and the same thing to 1 fifth. Once two fractions have the same denominator, of course, then we can just combine their numerators. OK, to change now, go from 1 ninth into four, to something over 45. To go, remember we're using the fundamental principle of fractions, which says the value of a fraction is unchanged if you multiply the top and the bottom by the same non-zero quantity. Here, uh, if we multiply, to get from 9 to 45, we'd have to multiply the bottom by 5, so we'll multiply the top by 5 as well. 5 over 45, of course, is the same as 1 over 9. And here to go from 5 to 45, the bottom was multiplied by 9, so we'll multiply the top by 9 as well. We have 5 over 45 plus 9 over 45 for an answer of 14 over 45. I want to end this videotape with a warning that uh, this rule, a b to the nth power equals a to the n, b to the n, is true for products, quotients. It is not true for sums and differences. It is not true that a plus b to the nth power is a to the n plus b to the n. Okay, if you are stuck with a sum here, you cannot get by with just distributing this power. Okay, let me give you an example which brings this home to you. Let's say uh, we have x minus y to the 
minus 1 power. This is not equal to x to the minus 1 minus y to the minus 1. If you had xy to the minus 1, this would be x to the minus 1, y to the minus 1, if you have a product. Okay, xy to the minus 1 is x to the minus 1, y to the minus 1, which uh, can then be simplified further. But it is, does not work for either a sum or a difference. If you have x minus y to the minus 1, you cannot distribute the power. Okay, and to show this, Let's work out each of these, simplify each of these sides separately and see that we don't get the same answer. x minus y to the minus 1 power, something to the minus 1 power, of course, is just 1 over x minus y to the first power. Here we have x to the minus 1, which is 1 over x, uh, minus y to the minus 1, which is 1 over y. We can combine fractions, the LCD here is x times y. To go from x to xy, we have to multiply the denominator by y, so we multiply the numerator by y as well. To go from y to xy, we multiply the denominator by x, so we multiply the numerator by x as well. We have the same denominator here. We combine the numerators y minus x over xy. And this is not the same as 1 over x minus y. And this does not work. Remember, you can use it for products. You cannot use it for sums or differences. Okay, a plus or minus b to the n is not equal to a to the n plus or minus b to the n. Doesn't work that way. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the tape.